Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 39 and the penultimate episode of Ultron the Real Robot. And that means there's going to be one more episode in the series and we're going to finish it off at a clean 40 parts. It's not the longest series I've done, but it started in October 2015. So hopefully after this we can get on with some shorter series that keep people's attention a bit better. Last time we did some stuff with virtual reality and building Ultron's brain in the virtual world. So we had a situation where sensors would trigger balls to fall in and then the physics environment uh, would actually cause those balls to fall through the world and eventually trigger colliders at the other side that make Ultron move. So instead of just standing there still, he basically fidgets a bit. And this time we're gonna try and make him a bit cleverer using the emotions that we've got running in his brain that's just over there. We'll have a look at in a moment and also give him a bit of a sense of an artistic mind, so he's got a mind's eye. This is the hardware portion of Ultron's brain. It's got two Arduinos in it. One deals with motion control and his initial reactions. The back one tracks emotions. And basically, as you poke him around, his emotions change, he gets angrier, and then the front Arduino makes him respond to touch and so on in a different way. And those emotions are reflected in these LEDs. We did quite a bit of work on this in the past, so check out the rest of the series. Last time, we took the data from the front Arduino in terms of his sensing, and that's what makes those balls appear. They fall through the virtual world, they hit colliders, and that sends data back to make him respond in a particular way. This time we're going to pull off the emotion data from the rear Arduino and we're going to put that into the virtual world so it influences the path that the balls take. Now I've tidied up a bit here, we've got some switches here for happy, sad, excited, angry and tender and scared and these are manual control over his emotions and the result of those gives us activation or deactivation and whether that's pleasant or unpleasant and that's basically what we're going to use in the virtual world. In the end his emotions settle at the middle and that's uh, controlled by this knob here and as I turn it up it means it takes longer for the emotions to settle. If I turn it right down, they all sort of average out within a few seconds. So we've got quite a lot of hardware control here. And I'm still keeping this hardware brain because that means I can take Ultron to places with just this without the virtual reality setup and he'll still actually be quite reactive and we can control the emotions with the buttons. And of course Ultron lives in the portal there from the virtual world to the physical world, which we can also walk straight through. So we've got some test control blocks there. Up here we've got the ramp where the balls fall through and you can see those gates popping up every so often which lets the balls out when Ultron is triggered. And over to the left we've got the existing colliders that make Ultron move when the balls hit them. So what we need to do now is make some reactive elements that react to his emotions. So I've modelled up this uh, ramp here in Fusion 360, I've exported it as an OBJ and brought that into Unity and I've coloured them in blue here but basically we've got two ramps. One is facing one way as the old ramp was and the other one is facing the other way which means as the balls come out they're going to fall to the right unless this ramp moves out of the way and then they'll fall to the left. So what I've actually done now is tied the position of that top ramp to the um, emotional state. So we can see these variables on the right here for activation and deactivation and basically when he's in the middle it sits there and the balls fall to the left here and uh, cause him to have normal outputs but when he becomes deactivated then the ramp moves in so if I go and deactivate some of his emotions here we can cause that ramp to slide in and that then means that some of those balls if we just give his arm a shove there we should find any balls that get generated get scooped off and they fall to the right instead here they come and basically what that means is that uh, Ultron will take those balls and put them into another part of its brain for processing so it can think while it's bored instead of having the output caused by those balls falling to the left. And of course if we turn down the decay on those emotions, you can see the brain twitching away there, the ramp slowly moves back and more of those balls fall to the left now and those fall onto the colliders to give Ultron a physical output. So in Unity there's a C-sharp script that reads the serial data and I've got two uh, lots of reading here from the two serial ports for those two Arduinos. The last one is from last time that reads the trigger for being touched and so on that triggers those balls to appear and the other one here is basically reading the emotions. So this is sending two bytes to the Arduino and then it's reading the four bits of data uh, basically for activation, deactivation or whether that's pleasant or unpleasant. And on the Arduino side, my emotional Arduino in fact 
that is running and it's a multitasking event but it's only running every 200 milliseconds and what I found of course was that basically Unity wants to run at 90 frames a second and it's requesting the data not that often but it doesn't really matter because if there's a 200 millisecond delay in the Arduino replying that will cause a glitch every time it tries to read the data. So in fact what I've done here is uh, broken out the serial statement so it runs on every loop of the Arduino, checking if there's any serial data, reading two bytes and then returning the data. So it's very important in fact that Unity drives the rate at which the data is sent and received and the Arduino or whatever it's reading from is able to reply immediately so you don't get any glitches. And I can use those variables anywhere I want. If I declare them as public static variables, then I can use them um, and attach them to scripts to any object. So uh, in fact, you'll notice that my environment's got a bit bigger. I've got a downstairs now, which is this nice blue plane. And uh, basically we've got some other things on the right. So uh, when this ramp is fully in and the balls fall this way to the right, they actually fall onto these uh, kind of cubes and um, well they're not really cubes but uh, sort of irregular shapes in fact so the balls all fall in different directions and in fact depending on how pleasant or unpleasant Ultron is feeling these will actually rotate um, and that will call the ball cause the balls to fall in a different way and they fall onto these blocks which are kind of see-through and those have actually got collider meshes on and that causes some other shapes to fall out of this emitter and basically it makes a random lump of shapes on the ground if Ultron is deactivated which means he's a bit bored so he's thinking and if he's pleasant or unpleasant it causes a different thing to happen so we could then in turn have collider meshes that make him react in a different way depending on what the pile of blocks looks like but in fact this is the closest thing he's got to creative thinking it's kind of his mind's eye and the aim would be to position a virtual camera looking at this and place a screen in the brain so you can see what he's thinking all right, so currently we're in uh, activated mode where um, Ultron's emotions, of course, trigger or his sensors trigger those balls to appear and those roll off to the left and then they eventually hit colliders that gives him some physical output. So if we make Ultron very deactivated by uh, pressing some buttons here and we're going to move the, uh, the ramp there right in so the balls fall to the right. So now he's deactivated and he's doing his creative thinking time. So uh, you can see the balls drop off to the right there and um, that creates those uh, spheres to drop out of the other emitter. So if we uh, poke him some more, we should be able to uh, get more of those to be created. Obviously his brain is still reacting, so that's still tracking emotions. It's doing his uh, sort of initial reaction, the sound uh, responses and everything still work. But there we can see lots of cubes dropping down. And um, effectively, that's creating a piece of artwork. It's like creative thinking. It's a bit abstract. I'm not going to develop the concept any further for Ultron, although I'd like to do something else with virtual reality and a hardware interface uh, to create things in the virtual world from some sort of creative interface from an experimental point of view. Um, ultimately, it's a bit of a gimmick. I'd like to display that view, uh, a close-up view of those cubes on a screen in the brain as a point of interest. But actually, I'm going to get on and develop something a bit more serious for this and leave that where it is. So returning to our reaction and reflex Arduino, I've coded in some more um, hard-coded phrases here, which are basically uh, phrases it says when it receives different data. I've also gone down and uh, coded in some more motions here using some more of the joints and those are separate bits of data. So now what we really need to do is influence where those balls fall on the left based on its emotional state so that it does various actions. I've now made a hole in the upper floor and I've added this plate here which is basically um, a kind of diverter that sends the balls in different directions and that tips around depending on how Ultron is feeling. So uh, basically whether he's feeling pleasant or unpleasant it tips in one axis and it's also tipped in another axis and uh, that is controlled by some invisible colliders underneath the uh, big emitter here. So um, in fact we've got some uh, colliders sat somewhere, let me just find them. They're here floating around and basically when he has free thought and uh, the cubes that drop down hit these colliders then it makes this plate tip in the other axis. So basically while he's deactivated and thinking it will alter what happens uh, when he's activated and responding again. Um, down the bottom here we've got the colliders which are for the actions so depending on how the, fall, the ball falls off this plate it will make Ultron have a different physical output.
I've also added in um, this red cylinder here, which is another ball emitter. So obviously if you don't poke Ultron around, the balls don't come out of the original emitters, so he doesn't do anything and he doesn't think. Uh, this one chucks a ball out every 10 seconds, and it's pretty bouncy, so it bounces all around and does lots of random stuff to keep him going. All right, so everything is running. Um, there we can see one of those green bouncy balls coming out of the Volition emitter and hitting the uh, colliders, and that makes Ultron move. Um, as well as, of course, the balls coming from the other sensors. So uh, you can see the plate is tipped slightly there at the moment. That's not making much difference to the bouncy ball. But um, the other balls, of course, are all falling uh, to that left side there. But if we uh, reverse that by changing his emotions... There we can tip the plate the other way and... Um, the balls fall the other way now, so uh, that's pretty good. And if we were to deactivate Ultron, you can see the blue sliding uh, ramp there. Some of the balls are going the other way now, so that will give him some free thought. And so when some cubes fall down on the other side, they hit those uh, colliders, and now you can see the plate has tipped slightly away from us. So uh, when balls do come that way, you can see it moving, in fact, in real time. They tend to fall in a different direction, so I probably need to put a front and back on that wedge so that um, it does something sensible and we still need to add in the speech. Uh, but essentially, um, basically it's giving Ultron some free thought. So uh, if I uh, calm him down and set everything back to neutral, that will just decay in a moment. So all those emotions will get set if uh, blocks stop falling on those uh, colliders and eventually should all go back to normal. My plate is now flat and those uh, blue ramps are in the correct position so uh, even if I don't touch him you can see the green ball appearing every so often and he's responding to me speaking anyway so we're getting yellow balls there we go so he kind of sits there looking around and doing various things and of course the Arduino dealing with reflex and reaction still works so I can uh, grab his arm and lift it up or do whatever I want to do and he'll still track those um, emotions making him angrier and this is what it looks like in the virtual world. So we've got Ultron in his portal there. If I just uh, move the camera up, we can see balls getting released, which come down this chute. And eventually they end up through the hole in the floor there. So if we just go and uh, walk through the portal and give Ultron a push. Should be able to get some balls to be released. And let's... Uh, See where they end up. Here they come. And there they go through down into the colliders there. We should, uh, yep, make Ultron do various things. I've built out my system of colliders a bit better, so all of these red planes are actually see-through planes, so we can see where the balls go, but I've got a front and a back on my uh, wedge there with the um, motion colliders, and some more random stuff at the bottom, and all of these um, little teeth at the bottom here are colliders for speech phrases, so that'll actually trigger the brain to say some phrases. Of course it can't say uh, too many phrases at once, it has to wait for one to finish, so if lots of balls hit it at once, he doesn't just say loads of things, he'll um, take a pause and uh, uh, wait for the next ball to come along so obviously the whole of the motion and all of the speech is basically uh, going to be controlled by the angle of this plate and that um, of course depends on how he's feeling and how he was feeling when he was deactivated and doing creative thinking so he should favor certain phrases and actions depending on his state of mind what's that over there so he seems to say uh, what's that over there quite a lot um which is basically because the balls you can see are falling to the right there. But that's in his sort of emotional state, so uh, that's, that's pretty neutral. So um, obviously the other balls are hitting down, making his actions be triggered. And uh, that's about it. But if I uh, chuck some other balls in, let's trigger some... There we go, there's a different one. That's the reaction sense, or the reaction uh, from the front Arduino. And so is that, that phrase. And that's the one from the balls hitting it. So if we now make him uh, happier or sadder, let's just tilt that, uh, tilt that platform the other way, so some balls should fall the other way. He should favour some... Uh, favour some different phrases, hopefully. Yeah, there we go, there's a couple of others. 
So basically his uh, phrases and actions are fairly consistent based on how he's feeling and that's all down to that uh, slope moving around at the top and pushing the balls in a different way. But remember they're also dependent on how the creative thinking affects that bit of creative structure he builds which tilts the platform the other way which um, happens when he's deactivated so when he's thinking by himself that will influence how he reacts when he's back in active mode again and all of that is influenced by the emotions so uh, we probably need to tone it down a bit he's a bit fidgety but um, of course all of those initial reactions and reflex work and when he gets annoyed he responds differently anyway so uh, basically we've got the virtual environment there just kind of tracking his background thinking and giving him some other sense of what's going on now I've added three more collider meshes and I wanted to get rid of the camera in his nose so for now I've done uh, three meshes I don't know if you can just see them in the portal here they're green unfortunately but they're um they're in three sections and those cause Ultron to turn his head when I wave an object like the Vive controller into those colliders and of course we don't need to be um, in VR to make that work we can just wave the controller around because it's tracked in physical space and Ultron doesn't know the difference about where that sense is coming from of course we've still got those volition balls hitting a collider so occasionally he turns his head anyway and we can still distract him with the uh, sounds there and all of that works and all of those senses work at once and we could bring that sort of virtual vision sense in to make it spit out another ball the same as the hearing but as it is I think we'll leave it like that. I'd actually like to build that brain out further with more subsystems with maybe some little robots playing a strategy game for instance and depending on who wins then that would have some other influence on a part of Ultron's brain but I'm pretty happy with what we've got now that we can reflect an emotional state in the brain based on his emotions and all of those are open to manual control both through the senses in the robot and the buttons and so on on Ultron's brain and of course we don't need the whole HTC Vive setup for this to work it can run quietly on a laptop and we could perhaps have a version where we use keys to navigate around and move a virtual camera so we can see what's going on in the brain so uh, it should be pretty easy to exhibit it and see how people interact with it so I'm not actually going to spend ages working on this I think it's a good proof of concept and I'm probably going to do a different project which has some sort of physical and virtual control um, again with a portal that's probably a mini project like a machine that spans both worlds but I think this is a pretty good starter and hopefully you can see the idea I had that we've given Ultron some background emotional state even though of course it isn't really proper AI so that's actually all for this time. Next time's the last episode of Ultron, so we've basically got cosmetic finishing to do, lots of stuff to tidy up, and the final demo. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects, and you should also check out my Patreon campaign, which is how all of my projects are funded. Have a look at patreon.com xrobots, and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. All right, that's all for now.